everybody welcome back to the cabin so I decided to dig a bigger pond not by shovel my neighbor came back with his machine and the intent really was just to build this bank up so what was obvious once the pond starting started filling with water was that this low this bank here was really low and major issue because well, first of all, this is basically a dam. This is the lower end, the ground tapers off and originally it drained sort of down through this valley to the left here. So all this um, water pressure, all the way to the water was coming down to this end. It would have breached that, this dam essentially. And uh, being in the lowest spot of the entire pond, it meant that it was, as soon as the pond got full, this is going to be where it spilled over. And when water spills over a bank like that, it erodes it and probably would have taken wiped out this entire dam. What are you doing back there? Careful. That's better getting out of the wind. So basically at the bottom end of the dam now. This was always a wet spot, and it could keep this area wild down in here. Let this, um, well, it's not really much standing water, never really was standing water, just saturated the ground and was low. And some of the wet, wet laking, wet loving species of trees like the ash were growing down here. But now, with all the ash trees dying from the emerald ash borer, just basically dead trees down in this section. Anyway, it's very destructive looking right now and got to say, you know, it's not ideal. I'm not overly thrilled with the idea of having cut down and uh, excavated this much of the forest. But in the whole scheme of things, it's not much still and it's still good habitat for wildlife and for us. So in the long run, it's not a bad thing, but I do, I'm really looking forward to seeing this renaturalized the uh, shoreline and the and the dam especially i need to get it planted with some native species so that it all roots and takes hold and and becomes good wildlife habitat again i know someone who likes it Callie loves this uh, loves this pond she's always exploring the edge and going for random swims as well as of course fetching whatever i throw for her. so she's going to enjoy that i'm going to have fish in the pond eventually um, i'm going to talk eventually about the uh, change of plans with the workshop and if you look back at the building found the footing sort of for that building in the background you can see that it seems to be more suited for something other than a workshop it's quite a cool spot and it would be facing south overlooking the pond got that natural slope still uh, south facing so it's quite a, a micro climate there especially with this pond now and the the use of that area uh, calls for something a little bit more special, I think, than the workshop. Um, I'll share more about that in the future. But this here, well, it kind of all fits into that. This part of the property up here is actually where the longhouse is. And most of my acreage is actually on this side of this pond. Um, the cabin sort of stuck it back in, a, in the, the northwest corner of the property. So all of this... This kind of makes that a little bit more usable up in here um, for whatever, even for collecting firewood and stuff. Seven? Are you going for a swim? The other thing about this, this dam, it's funny because all the clay was at that end. It's, I guess it's normal. Um, because the runoff, and this is only fed by runoff, it's not a spring or, or a stream or anything. Uh, all these uh, sides kind of slope into that area and it collects there and then slowly washed its way out this end. And I guess as it did that over the hundreds of years, the soil would get pushed down more and more to this end. So there was too much of that organic material to make a good dam. So we had to, to get the material for this, we had to excavate the pond bigger bring in more of the clay from down at that end and form this this uh, bank with um, logs, rocks, and clay, much like a beaver would have done. And that's exactly what we talked about. How do you make a dam with natural materials? 
and uh, you just have to look at how the beavers do it in this area to uh, understand that this kind of thing really does work and works well. So that's it. I just wanted to share the uh, update on the pond. Right now I'm going to put in an overflow pipe um, just so that when the water does get up to that level, it goes through the pipe and then I'll put a little bit of gravel on top of it later to uh, keep it solid there and for the water to percolate around that as well. That'll stop the pond or the water from just eroding the, the soil and the clay. It'll go through that pipe instead. So I'm going to throw that in quickly before winter hits and we get that big rush of meltwater in the spring. That's probably when it would breach if I didn't do that.